몸물롱 BanjoBenClark.com. I am your host, Banjo Ben, here on the website that teaches you how to play banjo, guitar, and mandolin. Today's lesson is all about capos. It's a big one. It's about a 30-minute lesson. We're going to talk about all the different kinds of capos, how to put them on, how not to put them on, how to use them, the theory behind it. It's just, it's just a really great lesson. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, here in a moment, I'm going to ask you to come over to the website, BanjoBenClark.com. You can join as a Gold Pick member there, which allows you to view all of my videos for all three instruments, as well as download all the tabs and MP3s. And I do a new one each and every week. I pour my heart and soul into these. Um, so I'd love to have you on board over there. Let's talk all about capos now. Today is a really big lesson. It's all about capos. Let me tell you what we're going to do. I want to cover the different types of capos, and I want to tell you why I like some and why I don't like others, just from experience. Um, also, we want to talk about proper capo placement, and within that, we'll do some troubleshooting as to why you might be having some tuning issues with improper capo um, placement and, and where you might have actual issues with your guitar. Um, then we want, we're going to look at theory, and we're going to look at the two main reasons why we use a capo, um, and then we'll look at how to do that. And then we'll put that to use by using some real-world scenarios that I want to try to help you work through on your own um, to learn where you would put a capo and out of which position would you play in order to play a song in a certain key. So this is a, a huge lesson here at BanjoBenClark.com. Now, when I think about capos, the, the first thing that we want to just... Um, clarify is what the use of capos is or what their basic mechanics is. And the basic mechanics of a capo is simply to um, move up the tuning of your guitar. Okay, and that's the simplest way I can put it. So all of our guitars have what's called a nut. And that's this little piece of plastic or, or bone down here at the end of the guitar where our strings terminate. So what a capo is going to do is act like a movable, adjustable nut so that it can be moved anywhere up the guitar neck and affect the tuning of your guitar. Now I'll go ahead and tell you right off the bat that I use um, Elliott capos um, and I want to explain later why I do think they're the best and why I think you should check them out. That's why that's one I have stored here on my guitar. Um, but I want to show you some other kinds too and tell you uh, the positives and, and negatives of those. You know, when I think about capos, I divide them right off the bat into two categories. This is just me. But I think about the tension that the capo um, supplies. You see, every capo has to squeeze the guitar neck. That's how it's able to fret the, the strings and make clear tones. And so when I think about capos, there's two different kinds. There's, there's a kind that has a constant tension, Okay, and we'll, we'll look at one of those. And then there are the ones like this um, Elliott capo that has adjustable tension. I'll talk about why that is better. But when we think about constant tension capos, I want to show you one that all of you are familiar with, um, this squeeze style capo. This particular one is made by Kaiser, I believe. You know, there's a lot of good things about these capos. I, I used them for years. Uh, one is they're affordable. Okay, and two, you can find them almost anywhere that any kind of accessories are sold. Third reason why they're they're good is they're very fast to apply. So you can literally apply them in a matter of a second and you can move it in a matter of a second and a half or however long it takes you. Okay, you can clip it on the end of your guitar headstock and, and not have to worry about it, even though I don't think that looks kind of dorky, but that's just me. But I've done it many times, so I'm not making too much fun. But anyway, the reason why I don't like these constant tension capos is because of that very reason, their constant tension. And you see, not every guitar is the same. Some guitars are set up with really low action, meaning that the strings are really close to the frets, and some has really high. And so what the folks at, at Kaiser and, and other companies that make these capos, what they have to do is they have to make a universal capo that's going to be strong enough to press the strings down of any guitar that it may come in contact with. And I just dropped it. Alright, so the problem with that is for most guitars, that means that these capos are going to squeeze too strongly. And that's definitely the case with this McPherson guitar that has a really low action. It's very easy to play. And so the amount of tension that this spring inside this Kaiser applies is probably twice as much as what this guitar might need. And you say, well, what's the problem with that, Ben? Well, the problem with that is that the tighter it squeezes, the more it's going to pull your guitar out of tune. 
Okay, every capo is going to make your guitar or your banjo a little more sharp. But the tighter that you squeeze, the more it's going to pull it out of tune and the more need that you may have to have to retune after you apply the capo. So I, I just simply want a little bit more control. Okay, I, I want to have a little bit more customization to how my guitar sounds and, and how uh, true my tuning is. And so therefore, I want to turn the rest of our time as far as looking at types of capos to our adjustable tension capos and show you a couple different kinds there. Two primary models. One that I really like is, is this G7th capo. I, I don't like it as, as well as my Elliott, but, but I have used these for years. And some good things about it. Um, it's very sleek design. It looks like it belongs on a spaceship and that's kind of cool I guess um, but it's got this little locking mechanism inside the the capo so that as you begin to squeeze it around your guitar neck it will lock um, and, and will not release so I can gently squeeze and listen to my guitar strings until I squeeze just hard enough to get clear notes a oh, little buzz so I'm gonna squeeze a little harder there we go so now I have true tone there and, and it will stay at that tension. It's got a little lever on the back that I can hit. It will release the tension and I can remove the capo. Um, so the, I, I do like these capos. They're definitely more expensive than those Kaiser Squeeze capos. The, the bad things about these, just being honest with you, they're, they're tough to move. Okay, it's, it, You can do it with one hand, but it's a little more tough. Um, and as far as storing the capo, you could throw it in your pocket. And I have at times squeezed this on the end of my headstock, um, but it tends to fall off. Um, but but I, do, I do recommend them. Go, go check them out. G7th uh, makes a great capo, and they make um, banjo capos as well. Now, I'm going to talk about the final um, model of capo that we have here, um, just like this Elliott capo that's stored there behind the nut of the guitar. Elliott's not the only one that makes these capos. Um, there are several uh, different brands, including uh, Page, um, a couple of others that make this, this design. And primarily what the design consists of is a, is a tension screw on the back of the capo. So that as you apply tension by screwing this in, it's going to, it has this little bracket that's going to press up against the back of the guitar, bring in this um, front lever here, whatever it's called, and, and gently put more and more pressure on the guitar. The reason why these particular models, I believe, are better is because it applies an even amount of pressure across the guitar strings. Okay, and you can very finely, finely tune that um, with this tension screw. The other reason why I like it is because it stores um, behind the, the nut of the guitar. So whenever it's not in use, I can just simply put it back there and put a tiny bit of pressure on it and it will remain in place. Now, here's the deal. I, I'll just go ahead and tell you. Um, Elliot Capos doesn't pay me any money to say this, but I, I do want to go to bat for them. Um, they are expensive. When you go and check out their website, ElliotCapos.com, uh, you may be surprised at the price. But, but here's the deal. Um, you, you know, my dad used to kind of laugh at folks that would, that would have really expensive and fine firearms, but then they would put the cheapest scopes and shoot cheap ammunition through them. It's like, you know, or get a really, really nice sports car and put a cheap bald tires on it. You see, your, your instrument is only as good as the accessories that you use. That's why I choose to invest in my capos and in my picks. I'll, I'll buy the more expensive ones. and It's also incentive not to lose them. Okay. But the reason why these Elliott capos are more expensive is because they're handmade. Okay. Phil makes each of these. They're made in Texas. So in the U S of a, and they're, they're a family company. And you can call them up and speak to Phil or his wife, Connie. They can do any kind of custom job that you have. So you could, if you had a, a, a maybe an irregular a neck width or perhaps a radius on your fingerboard, you can give them those measurements. They will custom make it. I just saw where they came out with the, the Tony Rice Signature capo, which I think is, is really, really cool. And they make banjo capos. They have a J.D. Crow Signature banjo capo. They're simply the best i'll just say that and then perhaps ah oh, keep dropping perhaps the best function of these is the push button technology there may be some other companies out there that are offering this now but you simply um to release the capo press down on this button on top it releases it and then to attach it back it just clicks 
back into place. Pretty cool, huh? This particular one I have is called the um, Elite, the McKinney Elite, and I have it engraved with my name. I've bought probably half a dozen of these from Elliot for different people, just as gifts and, and things. Um, and so I really believe in them. I invite you to go check them out and support them. Now let's look at proper capo placement and then we'll look at the theory behind why we use capos.